This is on the stereo envelope flanger. In a previous video with one of the chorus units, I'm not sure which one, I, I recreated it. And I'm going to do the same thing here with um, STR1. I'm going to recreate the envelope flange. But I want to try to do it fast instead of taking a half an hour to do the end effect like I did in the other one. So let's jump right in. Go to the common tab, basic vector. I'm going to choose STR1. That's going to take a second to load. Then in my insert effects, I will route to insert effect one. Insert effect one, of course, I will choose number 50. Yep, stereo envelope flanger. Um, I'll turn it off for now and let's jump into, into STR1. And I'm going to go to the mixer track and turn down string. Um, and let me put uh, an envelope generator three to trigger noise and it'll be fine with just like value 50 and so i'll leave that on zero uh let me go to the envelope generator three i'll keep break up put sustain down put decay oh wait, i want decay at like 10 and then slope at zero so this just creates a 10 millisecond blip when i press a key um the uh the time here says 10, but just know that that's a coincidence that it happens to be 10 milliseconds. It's this value does not equal milliseconds. Like 57 is not 57 milliseconds. Again, it just so happens to be that a value of 10 is equal to 10 milliseconds. Um, going back to the effect. Well, first of all, um, oh, let me route to the individual output so we can see it on the uh, oscilloscope and spectrum analyzer. So if I press a note here, that's our noise. Remember, the effect is bypassed right now. So if I turn this on, uh, let me let me kind of make some of these parameters middle of the road. I'm going to put feedback all the way in 100, wet on all the way wet. Um, yeah, so if I play something now, we'll get an infinite feedback loop. And yeah. So you heard that motion in there. What that is? Um, is an envelope that's traveling between these, uh, that's modulating the, the, the time of the flange between these two values. Um, so this is in stereo, which means we have separate time values for the left and right. The bottom is the bottom of the uh, envelope, and the top is where the envelope travels to. So if the uh, bottom is actually at a lower value then we can get uh we can get um an envelope to function uh it's always going to be unipolar but it'll it'll travel um it'll make the time faster it'll be as if we're raising the pitch um yeah let's go down to like middle c which is 3.8 milliseconds um i talk about how to tune delays in uh, the other videos in this flange series. Um, we're still at feedback 100, so we should just run through the gate. I want to actually turn the decay down. The times, by the way, are reversed. So the lower this value is, the slower the envelope. The higher it is, the faster the envelope. This is similar to like the way a DX7 works. Um, so let me put this down to like 30. Let's see how this sounds. So I want this to still be slower. Let's try again. It sounds nice. And of course we settle at 100 hertz because that's where our uh, bottom is. So again, this is an envelope that's traveling between these two points. I should mention that the envelope is functioning as if it has zero sustain. So it runs through the attack phase, reaches a peak, and then runs through the decay phase and goes back to the bottom. So it goes from here to here, back back to here. Um, let's try recreating the same thing. So we are going from 100 hertz, which is about a G sharp, to a to a middle C here. So let me bypass this. Let me go back to my EXI. And I'm going to jump over to my mixer and simply, let's see, I'll just turn this all the way down. 
Uh, let's go to my excitation mix. I'm going to turn pluck all the way down. I don't want that affecting the, um, the sound. I want to have noise modulated by envelope generator 3. And again, I'll give it an intensity of 50. Um, and then my string, I'll have my decay all the way up. This acts like sort of like a resonance parameter. Um, these excitation harmonic won't do anything if I don't have um, uh, pressure or tone enabled. Uh, I don't want any nonlinearity. We technically already have nonlinear. Well, mm, not really. Um, uh, I was going to say we already have nonlinearity because we're feeding noise into it, but nonlinearity in this case is actually um, like f somehow feeding the teeth of the comb filter. I haven't dissected it in detail. Maybe someday I'll do that, but um, damping on 25 is fine. I want dispersion on zero. I don't need it dispersed. This just spreads out the harmonics. Uh, let's listen to it. Um, and in order, well, yeah, we're not going to get any uh, pitch modulation right now, but I'll get to that. Let's just hear what it sounds like for now. And we don't hear anything. The reason is because I need to turn it up. Cool, so we're still getting a blip. And let's uh, modulate the string pitch. So I wanted to go from 100 hertz, so again, basically a G sharp, up to a, a C3. So if I, um, let's see, what's the best way to go about this? Let's see if I can make it static. So I am going to take my pitch slope down to zero. So I should always play a C3 no matter what I play. Yep. And I'm going to take my pitch and drop it down. Uh, I'll drop it down one octave. And then, oh, that's not an octave. There, an octave. Um, and then let's see one two three four semitones so now we should be playing a g and that's no matter what key i press oh yeah something else that i want to do let me jump back to common real fast and go to basic i'm going to put this in mono mode since technically we're even though we're uh mimicking the effect we can mimic it better by having it in mono since technically the effect is in mono so now our entire signal chain is mono um, so let's go back to the XI. We're playing about 100 hertz. Uh, technically, I guess I could tune it so it's like even closer. So yeah, I have a nice harmonic there. Whoop. Get up there. 100 hertz. So minus minus 63 tune. Cool, so we're starting in the correct position, and now I want to modulate it with an envelope generator. Sure, I'll use EG2. And I will have the intensity be, let's see, it's about an octave plus four. So 16. And uh, let's see, if I wanted to, I could modulate this intensity with an alternate modulation source, and that would allow me to get closer to that C3, like exactly in pitch, but I don't think it matters that much. So what I'm going to do is just leave it on um, 16, and let's fashion that envelope generator 2 sound like the envelope that we had so i want to take down my break and sustain and give it some attack give it some decay that's a lot of decay and i'm gonna need to hear the original again to remember what it sounds like but let's hear this first Oh, wrong envelope. <laughs> I'm going to change the, uh, the pitch envelope. Filter envelope shouldn't be doing anything. I don't think I have, I don't think I gave it any, uh, intensity. I wonder how many people, uh, realized I was adjusting the wrong envelope right away. So anyway, let's, uh, 
I guess I'll just put this as so I know that this isn't right. Um, all right, let's listen to this. That was a little slow. All right, let's listen to the other sound. Put our effect back on. Since feedback is up, I was making it do that. In fact, I should take feedback down, but let's leave it at 99, I guess, for now. Ah, we actually do win it all the way up or we end up losing. It's actually like really close. Let me turn this all the way up. Um, if I wanted to, I could mimic a difference in left and right delay times, but I don't think I could do that in a single instance of STR1. Also, these left and right times would be fed by the same noise input. Whereas if I were to mimic it in STR1, I'm pretty sure I would have to duplicate the EXIs and then they would they would have different noise noises. Um, the only other thing to do, I think, would be to have two instances of STR1s taking the same feed in a combi, and then that way the same noise could be feeding a left and right str1 instance with uh, these delay times so i think all that is like super excessive for me to mimic um i'm just happy that i was able to mimic this uh let's see what happens if we play the effect and the synth together at the same time also by the way uh the envelope generator uh should re-trigger yeah it's not monologato so the effect will also re-trigger every time a note is pressed Again, it's not mono legato. It is resetting with every note. Also, a good thing to know about this unit is it, whatever uh, control source you're using to trigger the envelope generator, it needs to pass through 50% uh, of the modulation source in, in a positive direction in order to trigger the envelope. So let's say you patched JSX into it, for instance. JSX is a bipolar modulation source. You can go left and right, but uh, zero consider to be like at zero, and then all the way to the right consider that to be like either 64 or 127, depending on how you look at it. But either way, you need to go halfway beyond the right in order to trigger the envelope. Um, again, I could show you, but I think a verbal explanation is enough. You could just play with it yourself to find out. Uh, another example would be the ribbon is like a bi is is a bipolar modulation source, so you can go. You can go from center left or center right. Center left would be considered negative. Center right would be considered positive. So in other words, you need to go like three quarters to the right in order to trigger the envelope generator that creates this uh, sweep. Um, but yeah, I want to hear what it sounds. I always forget about that feedback. I want to hear what it sounds like with both the um, with both synths uh, uh, playing at the same time. And it doesn't matter which key I press; they're all going to be doing the same thing. Very cool. They they are so close that you could actually hear like interesting phasing going on. And of course, I could change which pitches I'm sweeping through. Um, like I can I can go lower. Let's go to 15 and see what happens. And also let's increase our decay time and. Uh, shorten our attack time and let's do the same thing in str1 um where's my envelope generator i shortened my attack time i think i increased the decay time 
I would also technically need to go into my string pitch and move that down a bit. Wow. That harmonic was super awesome. Uh, let's mix a little bit of noise. Remember, this is still an excitation source for the flange itself. Alright, that's it for this. Thank you.